so hello guys uh, in this video we will learn about the uh, most popular multi objective optimization algorithm and we uh, namely uh, we know this algorithm as nsj2 and the full form is elitist non dominated shorting genetic algorithm so some of the terms you already uh, know in this full form that is what is non domination what is domination what is elitism and what is genetic algorithm i hope you have heard about the genetic algorithm uh, if you are not aware about the genetic algorithm then i i suggest that you would first go through the basics of genetic algorithm then uh, see this video on nsga2 because there are various concepts which is used in nsga2 which is similar to the genetic algorithm so it is better to have uh, some idea about the genetic algorithm and uh, then move to the extended version of genetic algorithm to the multi objective optimization problems now uh, the name is nsga2 and uh, why it is 2 because it is an extension of nsga which is non elitist non dominated sorting algorithm now the purpose of elitist means uh, how many uh, best solutions i mean elitist elitism means to keep the best solution in the next iteration so uh, in nsga uh, when uh, when kalyan may dev which is a author of this algorithm uh, proposes uh, or see uh, the algorithms in multi objective optimization problems uh, so there are very less algorithms available to which implement the elitism property of genetic algorithm which 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 is there in the single objective optimization problem and uh, uh, he implement a novel idea of making or uh, uh, having uh, uh, how to define the elitist solutions in the multi objective solution space so we will learn how uh, the algorithm is working how the elitist uh, property is preserving and uh, uh, let me give you an idea about the elitist property so the pro elitist property says to keep the best solutions in the next iteration and what it means that uh suppose i have uh, two or th uh, four, four or five solutions available and uh, at some particular time uh, suppose these are uh, suppose we have in single objective problem we have only one function suppose f1 is a one function and the fitness value of uh, uh, these solution is are uh, like this 0.7 0.8 and 0.9 and if i consider this solution as a minimization problem then these two solution or above solutions are better solutions so what we'll do in genetic algorithm we generally take a uh, fixed size variable like if we have a variable keep is equal to 2 or we can say that this keep is uh, is is used to is used to represent the elite size or elitism size so if we have elitism size as 2 it means these two solutions 1 and 2 is going to the next iteration as it is and rest of the solutions are modified so in this way we always uh, maintaining a property of having best solution in my solution space in any case if your genetic algorithm is losing uh, the search or is uh, is uh, another way around from the global optima then this elitism property will uh, help in keeping uh, the algorithm into the track so elitism played a key role in single objective optimization problems similarly it also play a key role in multi objective optimization problem and the strength of nsga2 is it have the elite property elite preserving property and also it also supports the diversity it also supports the diversity in the population so there are various algorithm proposed uh, in uh, the literature or in the textbooks uh, which implement the elitism but does not uh, cannot able to maintain the diversity so in nsj2 we have two uh, prime concern one is uh, to maintain the elite preserving property and to maintain the diversity in the population so let's discuss the whole idea about the so this is a uh, overall algorithm about the uh, nsga2 
so it starts with the formation of rt which is a union of parent population and child population which is given and or which is of comes after the crossover and mutation operators uh, on parent solution pt then we perform the non dominated sorting on the whole set rt and we have to identify the different fronts in the rt f1 2 uh, how many uh, it depends upon the non domination sorting that how many fronts are there in step 2 uh, we initialize the population in the next iteration denoted by pt plus 1 as phi and increment a counter i is equal to 1 then we check whether uh, the size of the uh, pt plus 1 plus the first front because i is equal to 1 the size of first front uh, is less than n or not if it is then we include this first front into the uh, next iteration population and increment the value of i then we again check uh, whether front 2 and plus the existing size of the population in the next iteration is less than n or not and if we found it true then again increment the i plus 1 otherwise we will perform the crowding distance sort on the current front which is not included in pt plus 1 and uh, in that front we include mostly most widely spread solutions and uh, the number of solutions which are included is n minus mode of pt plus 1 means only the remaining solutions in pt plus 1 are selected from the front which is not included and the selection is based on the crowding distance okay so we will see how we apply the crowding short uh, on the front solutions then after uh, including all the solution and forming pt plus 1 next step to form qt plus 1 by applying the selection operator here the selection operator is different we have the crowding distance tournament selection operator by which we will form qt plus 1 uh, after that we will apply mutation and crossover which is similar to the nsga uh, which is similar to the genetic algorithm also so in qt plus 1 and uh, and uh, pt plus 1 we apply the crowding distance tournament selection now uh, that the crowding distance uh, uh, tournament selection is based on the uh, crowding distance between the two solution which is denoted by this operator this is the notation of uh, uh, comparing two solutions with their crowding distance whether solution i uh, have uh, so the, the comparison is based on two attributes one is whether if if I, we have uh, we have to compare any two solution i and j with this operator then uh, there are two attributes to comparing uh, these two solution in the tournament selection operator first is what is the rank of i and your rank of i should always less than rank of j okay so uh, the meaning of this is the non domination rank of i is always better than non domination rank of j and what is the rank so if the solution uh, so all the solution in front f1 have the rank r is equal to 1 all the solution in front f2 uh, have the rank i is equal to 2 and so on so if any if i is in the higher front then it is it is considered as a better solution then we are not going to look for the crowding distance as well so if condition one is true it means this i should be selected in the tournament selection if it is not true or if you found r i is equal to r j then there is a problem which solution is to be selected in that case there is a second condition for selection operator and the second condition says that your crowding distance di should be greater than dj if you want to select i in the your in your uh, uh, qt plus one set so the crowding distance is calculated and if the crowding distance is higher it means it is widely spread solution and it, it will improve the diversity in the population that's why we are only select those solutions whose crowding distance is more now so we are we have used the crowd, crowding distance in the tournament selection operator here itself in step 4 and also in step 3 
uh, to perform the crowding sort so crowding distance calculation is very uh, important step in NSGA 2 now we are going to look at how we can calculate what is the algorithm to calculate the crowding distance and then we how we uh, uh, how this crowding distance is able to find out the uh, most diverse solution in the population so let's see the algorithm for calculating the crowding distance